Okay, now for question number nine from P4, Pure Mathematics 4, Sample Assessment Paper. Question about vector equations. So with respect to a fixed origin O, the line L1 is given by the equation R equals 8, 1 minus 3 plus mu times minus 5, 4 and 3, where mu is a scalar parameter. The point A lies on line 1, where mu equals 1. Find the coordinates of A. So simply just replace the mu with 1 and find the position of A. So the position of A will be given by 8, 1, minus 3, plus 1 times minus 5, 4, and 3, which will give it 8 minus 5, which is 3, and you have 1 plus 4, which is 5, and you have minus 3 plus 3, which is 0. So those are the coordinates of the point A. So we should give it in coordinate form, which is 3, 5, and 0. That's in coordinate form, x, y, and z coordinates. OK, then it says the point P has the position vector 1, 5, 2. The line L2 passes through the point P and is parallel to the line L1. So if it's parallel to the line L1, then its direction will be the same direction as line 1. And the, 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 the vector equation of the line, the first vector is basically a point on the line, any point on that line. And then you have a scalar multiplied by the direction of the vector. So this represents the direction of the vector. So if the line L2 is parallel to line L1, this will be exactly the same could be the same in terms of it could be a, f a multiple of it okay it could be you know the negative version of it doesn't matter but basically it will give you some it will end up giving you the same vector if you were to factorize out the factors but all we have to do is just take this as its direction and <coughs> it goes through the point p so we know that this is the position vector so that's the first part of the vector so we can say that for line two I'll just label it here so that we see it will be able to remember. The position vector is given by the point, which is P152, plus, and I'll just call it a different parameter, mu, sorry, lambda. Mu was used already, so I'll use lambda, minus 5, 4, 3. Minus 5, 4, 3. Okay, simple. That's why it says write down. There's no calculation involved here at all. You're just taking this point. And you're taking the direction of the first vector, the first line, line one. <coughs> okay, so here we have part B done. Part B done. Sorry about that. So we're going to now do part C. It says calculate the exact value of the distance from A to P. Now, A was the point that we found three five zero. So A, we can say the vector from O to A, therefore is 350. Okay, that's O to A. And we want to find the distance A to P. So we need to find the vector A to P. Uh, A to P. So we need what O to P is. Then. O to P, the vector from O to P, we the vector, the position vector of P, which is 152. Okay. Now we need to find the vector A to P. If you were to imagine this is O, this is A, and this is P. You can just draw them randomly because it's three-dimensional. We can't really draw it accurately anyway. So that's O to A, that's O to P. We want to find A to P. A to P is basically minus O A plus O P, which you could say is the same as O to P minus O to A. Okay, so we're going to have 152 minus 350. That will give us the vector from A to P. Okay, and that is going to be 1 minus 3, which is minus 2, 5 minus 5, which is 0, and 2 minus 0, which is 2. So that's a vector from A to P. Okay, so we need to find the exact value of the distance AP. So we want to find the magnitude of A to P, basically, which is basically when you take each of these numbers, you square them, add them together, and find the square root. So minus 2 squared is 4. 0 squared is 0, and 2 squared is 4. 
So you get the square root of 8, which is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is 2 times the square root of 2, which is what we had to show. Okay, so k root 2. So k is 2. Therefore, k is equal to 2. Okay, so there's the answer for part C. That's the exact value of the distance AP. Now, next question is the find the acute angle. Well, they, they tell you that the acute angle between AP and line 2 is theta. Find the value of cosine theta. Okay, so basically when we take... We're going to use this rule here to find the angle between two vectors. And it's basically the dot product of the two vectors is equal to the magnitude, the product of the magnitude of the two vectors times the cosine of the acute angle between them. Okay, so this is um, when they are tail to tail. Okay, so we need the vector from A to P. And we need to find the vector, the direction of line 2. Okay, so we know that um, A to P we found was minus 2, 0, 2, minus 2, 0, 2, and the direction of line 2 is the same as the direction of line 1, which is minus 5, 4, 3, because it's parallel to the power, remember, minus 5, 4, and 3. So the dot product of these two vectors is given by when you multiply them together in this fashion which I'll show you. We write them next to each other like this with a dot between them. And that's equal to the magnitude of A which was 2 root 2, the magnitude of this vector, times the magnitude of this vector which is the square root of 25 plus 16 plus 9 times cosine theta. So when you multiply these vectors as a dot product or scalar product, you've got minus 2 times minus 5, which is 10, plus 0 times 4, which is 0, plus 3 times 2, which is 6, and that's equal to 2 root 2 times the square root of, that's 25, 34, 50. Okay, and that's times cosine theta. They want the, the value of cosine theta, so cosine theta is going to be the 16 divided by and that's going to be 2 times root 100, okay, which is 2 times the square root of 100, which is the same as saying 2 times um, 10, which is 20. Okay, so that gives us 16 over 20, so cosine theta is equal to 4 fifths, and we know it's positive uh, because the acute, the acute angle, the cosine of an acute angle will give you a positive ratio. So if the answer came out as negative, that would have been um, the obtuse angle between them. We, they want the acute angle between them. Okay, so if it did come out as negative, you'd write the answer as positive four-fifth. Because we want the, what, what it would mean then is the angle that we would have found would have been in this angle here when they're asking us for this angle, the acute one. So we'd have to just write it as a positive value, the cosine of the angle. Okay, then it says a point E lies on line 2. Given that AP equals PE, find the area of the triangle AP. Okay, so now, let's make a little diagram. We know the two lines are parallel, so let me draw two lines which look parallel to each other. Okay, just try and make it look, look parallel. This is line 1, and this is line 2. And the point E lies on the line 2, given that AP... So let's just go back here. Um... Just to make sure, we've got A and P. Now it says A is on line 1, and it says P is on line 2. Okay, so A is on line 1. So let's say A is over here somewhere, and P is on line 2. Let's say uh, P is over here somewhere. Doesn't matter where you draw it, really. Okay, and we know that the angle between those two lines, acute angle, is called theta and we know it's the value of the cosine of theta okay then it says given it says point e lies on the line two so e is on the line here somewhere okay given that a p equals p e so a p equals p e so you have an isosceles triangle 
So basically PE would be somewhere, E might be somewhere over here. And that length and that length are the same. Okay, find the area of the triangle APE. So let's just close this up. So we have this isosceles triangle. And we know that AP, I think we found what AP was. The length AP. Yep, the distance AP was 2 root 2. Okay, so we know that this is 2 root 2. And as PE is the same length as AP, this is also 2 root 2. Okay, so we can use uh, the, the area of a triangle is a half AB sine theta. Now, we know that cosine theta is 4 fifths. Therefore, sine theta must be 3 fifths. If you remember, if we can just draw a little right angle triangle to represent theta. It's not the same as triangle, but this is just to work out the ratio of the angles. Cosine theta is 4 fifths. So this is a, you know, a, using Pythagoras, you find that this is 3 fifths. So the sine theta must be 3 fifths. Okay, so you can say the area is a half times, you're going to have 2 root 2 times 2 root 2, which is 2 root 2 squared, times the sine of theta, which is 3 fifths. So the area of this is going to be a half times 4 times 2 times 3 fifths. They cancel out, so you're going to have the area is 12 over 5. 12 over 5. Let's make that a bit neat. Which is going to be 2 and 2 fifths. So you can say 2.4 units squared. So that's the area the area of this triangle okay all right then it says part f find the coordinates of the two possible positions of e uh, okay so it's possible that ap and pe it's possible that e could be over here somewhere where that length is the same as that length in which case you'd have the triangle ape looking like this Okay, that's also possible and of course it would be the same area because the sine of theta here will give you the same value as a sine the sine of this angle here will be the same as the sine of the angle because they want the sine of an angle is equal to the sine of 180 minus that angle so it give of course give you the same area as this triangle will give you the same area as this triangle so yeah it's possible for e to be here so let's call this e dash and let's call this e so it says find the coordinates of the two possible positions of e Okay, so basically the coordinates of the positions of E will be given by their position vector. So, we're basically asked to find what O to E is. Now, O to E would be O to P plus P to E. O to P plus P to E. Right, if we could get to P and then from there we can get to E, we're going to find the position vector of E. Okay, so we know what O to P is already. Okay, we know what O to P is already. O to P, it was in the other page, it gave us the position vector of P, which was 1, 5, 2. Okay. Okay, that's O to P. So we know what O to P is 1, 5, 2. So we can say O to P is 1, 5, 2. Okay, so if we can get from O to P, then from P we can get to E. So we have to go along the vector Okay, L2 until we get to E. So we need to go some length along line 2 from P. And then we'll get to E. Either in the forward direction or the backward direction. So we know that the direction from that the, the P, to, P to E is going to have... The magnitude of P to E is going to be 2 root 2. And the magnitude of P to E dash... Okay is going to be minus 2 root 2. And that's the magnitude. Oh, sorry. They'll both have the same magnitude. Okay. The magnitude will be the same, of course. It'll be 2 root 2. But one will be in the positive direction, one will be in the negative direction. Okay. So we need to find a vector that's going in the same direction as line 2, but with a magnitude of 2 root 2. So let's look at the direction of line 2. The, li the direction of line 2 is basically given by the vector minus 5, 4, 3. Minus 5, 4, 3. Okay, now this does not have a magnitude of 2 root 2. We need to have a vector that's going in the same direction as that, minus 5, 4, 3. The same direction as that, 
but with a magnitude of 2 root 2. So um, basically what we need to get from O to E it's going to be uh, 1, 5, 2. Is it 1, 5, 2 or minus 1, 5, 2? Just to make sure. It's 1, 5, 2. There's no minus there. Okay, so it's 1, 5, 2. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Plus some constant times minus 4, 5, 4, 3 and O to E dash will be given by 1, 5, 2 times or plus uh, we can say minus K times going in the opposite direction minus K times minus 5 and 4 and 3 so we need to find what k is. We know that um, the magnitude of the of this the magnitude of, of this vector must be two root two. Okay, so k times minus five four three must be its magnitude must be uh, must be two root two. So let's find what the magnitude of, of this direction vector is. So the magnitude of minus five. 4, 3, I think we already found it. it, was root 50, wasn't it? Root 50. 25 plus 16 plus 9. Okay, so that's going to give you uh, 25 times 2, so it'll be 5 root 2. 5 root 2. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's going to be the magnitude of this vector. So we know that our k is going to be... Um, so the unit vector, a unit vector in, in the direction of line 2 is going to be 1 over 5 root 2 times minus 5 and 4 and 3. That's like a unit vector in the direction of line 2. That's like the unit vector. Let me just write that down here. It's not very neat, unfortunately. So we know that a unit vector in the direction we want is 1 over 5 root 2 times minus 5, 4, 3. Okay, that's one unit in the direction that we need. We need something which has a magnitude of 2 root 2 units. So if we can say that um, if we multiply 1 over 5, so you, your value of k is going to be 2 root 2 times 1 over 5 root 2. Okay, so you're going to have 2 fifths. Okay, so the value of k is going to be 2 fifths. So 2 fifths times this vector will be a vector which has a magnitude required of 2 root 2 because 2 root 2 uh, times 1 over 5 root 2 gives us, see 1 over 5 root 2 is 1 unit, so 2 root 2 times that will give us something with a magnitude of 2 root 2. So the k is two fifths. So I'm just going to extend the page down here. Really should pay, turn over, but I've got everything written down here, so it's easier. So I know that one of my coordinates, one of my, <coughs> my positions for e is going to be given by one five two plus two fifths times minus four minus five four three. So you have one minus. 2 which is minus 1 and you have 5 plus 8 over 4 5 sorry 5 plus 8 over 5 which is 25 over 5 plus 8 over 5 which is 33 over 5 then you're going to have 4 over 5 so you're going to have 2 plus 6 over 5 2 plus 6 over 5 which is like 10 over 5 plus 6 over 5, which is 16 over 5. Okay, that's O to E. And then you're going to have O to E dash, the other direction, which is going to be 1, 5, 2, minus 2 fifths times minus 5, 4, 3. Okay, so you're going to have 1 plus 2, which is 3. 
and you're going to have 2, 25 over 5 minus 8 over 5, which is 17 over 5. And you're going to have 10 over 5 minus 6 over 5, which is 4 over 5. So we can say that um, the coordinates of E and E dash are going to be minus 1, 33 over 5, and 16 over 5. And E dash, you're going to have 3 and 17 over 5 and 4 over 5. Let me just make that a bit neater. 17 over 5. And there we have the answer to that question. I think that's a complete question answered now. And those are the two possible positions of E. Okay, so there we have the question number nine and the whole paper now being answered.